Hello. In this question, which is related to E2 mechanism, E2 stands for elimination by molecular reaction. We should predict the major product of elimination reaction of this compound with a given name with hydroxide. And also we should consider the stereochemistry of the products. Based on this given name, this is the corresponding structure. Let's show the nomenclature of this compound here. Carbon bearing chlorine gains number one, followed by this carbon, and then this carbon is number three. So we have one chloro, two and three dimethyl cyclohexane, because we have a six-membered ring, which is cyclohexane. The most important part of this nomenclature is regarding the configuration around chiral centers. Here we have three chiral centers, which are the centers bonded to four different groups. Here, for example, this carbon is bonded to four different groups, chlorine, this tertiary carbon, followed by this secondary carbon, and also hydrogen, which is in the back. So this is a chiral center. Let's assign the configuration around carbon number one. This chiral center, which is shown by asterisk. Here, chlorine gains number one, followed by this tertiary carbon, which gains the second priority, and then this carbon of CH2, which is a secondary carbon, gains number three, and hydrogen, which is in the back, gains the least priority, which is number four. Now, if we go from one to two, and from two to three, and from three to one, we have a clockwise motion, so the configuration around carbon number one, this carbon becomes R. We have one R for carbon number one. Now let's assign the configuration for carbon number two, this carbon. Here, this carbon bearing chlorine gains the first priority followed by this carbon, which is a tertiary carbon. So here we have the second priority and methyl gains the third priority and the fourth priority, which is the least priority belongs to hydrogen, which is in the back because this carbon is tetrahedral and hydrogen must be in the back in order for carbon to be tetrahedral. So this is number four, hydrogen. Now, if we go uh, from one to two, and from two to three, and from three to one, we have counterclockwise motion. So the configuration around carbon number two becomes S, we have two S. Now let's assign the configuration for carbon number three. This carbon here, this tertiary carbon gains number one, followed by this secondary carbon, which is the second priority and methyl gains the third priority. And here hydrogen is in the front and it gains number four. There is a problem here. When we stand here to look at the molecule and to assign the configuration, the least priority is in the front. What we should do? We should do the same as before. We should go from one to two, from two to three, and from three to one. And it seems that the configuration should be S because this motion is counterclockwise. However, because the least priority is in the front, we should reverse the configuration. So the configuration around carbon number three becomes R. 
Now, before answering this uh, question, we should review the mechanism of E2 reaction. In E2 reaction, we need strong base such as OH minus, and then strong base will remove beta hydrogen. What is beta hydrogen? If carbon bearing halogen is called alpha, this carbon adjacent carbon is called beta. So the attached hydrogen, the hydrogen attached to beta carbon is called beta hydrogen. Now here hydroxide removes this proton and then these two electrons come here to make a pi bond and X as a living group must leave because carbon atoms cannot have five bonds. And then we have the product, which is alkene. And of course, the conjugate acid of OH minus, which is water. Now, the key point of this question is related to the stereochemistry of products. The other important concept in E2 reaction, elimination by molecular reaction, is regarding the position of beta hydrogen and living group. They must be in anti position. That means they must be in opposite size and they must be also in the same plane. Here, for example, CH bond and CX bond are in the same plane, but they are in opposite sides. Why? We should have this requirement for E2 reaction. This picture shows the answer. When base, for example, OH minus, removes this beta proton, as you see, here, two electrons will remain on p orbital of carbon. And here, when x leaves with two electrons, we should have an empty orbital on carbon. At the same time, during the reaction, we would have overlap between these two orbitals. And in order for these two orbitals to overlap perfectly, they must be parallel to each other. And to be parallel to each other, we should have this conformation in which CH and CX bonds are in the same plane. And after overlap between these two p orbitals, we have formation of pi bond. Now there might be a question here. Why? X and beta hydrogen living group and beta hydrogen must be in anti positions. Why they cannot be in syn positions like this conformation in which both CH and CX bonds are on the same side and also they are in the same plane. So when they are in the same plane, those two p orbitals will overlap very well because they are parallel. However, there is a problem here with scene confirmation. This is scene confirmation and this is anti-confirmation. What's the problem with scene? Here, as you see this sign, the equilibrium is favored for anti-confirmer and is disfavored for scene confirmer. Why? Because in scene confirmer, there would be repulsion between H and X, and also between these two sigma bonds. And this conformation, if you remember, is called eclipsed conformation, which is very unstable. So the major conformation would be anti. And as I mentioned, when they are on the same plane, the overlap between these two orbital would happen very well to form a perfect pi bond. By knowing these concepts, now we can answer this question. As you see here, to answer this question, we should consider beta hydrogens. Here I have shown uh, different beta hydrogens by different colors. Just uh, please keep in your mind. For this carbon, we have green hydrogen, which is in the back. And, for, uh, and also we have red hydrogen, which is in the front. For carbon-bearing halogen, which is called alpha hydrogen, 
we also have one hydrogen in the back. And for this beta, hydro beta carbon, we do also have another beta hydrogen, which I showed by blue color. So here we have two beta carbons, two different types of beta carbons, this one. And to show you the difference, I use a different color for the other beta carbon, for example, this brown color. This is beta carbon. What's the difference between blue beta carbon and brown carbon? The blue one is a secondary carbon and the brown color is a tertiary carbon. So here we have three different beta hydrogens. Red, green, and blue. Again, beta hydrogens are connected to beta carbons. What is beta carbon? Beta carbon is the carbon attached to alpha carbon. Now, we have three options for elimination reaction here. Let me show you each one. If this red hydrogen is removed we might think that the e1 would occur without any problem because we have beta hydrogen but what's the issue here for this elimination reaction this red hydrogen is removed and then these two electrons come here and chlorine chloride leaves the molecule to form a pi bond here what's the problem as I mentioned in the previous slide, the beta, the beta hydrogen and the living group must be in anti positions. They must be on opposite sides. So the elimination reaction doesn't happen through removing this red hydrogen. How about green hydrogen? Let's try it. So again, this carbon bearing chlorine is alpha, adjacent carbon is beta. How about the green hydrogen? If OH minus removes this green hydrogen, could we have formation pipe of pi bond? Yes, because the green hydrogen and chlorine are on opposite sides, they are anti. So they will satisfy the requirement for E2 reaction in which beta hydrogen and living group must be in anti positions. Okay, if that happens, we have formation of double bond between these two carbons and chloride leaves, and we have formation of this product, which I name as product A. How about the other possible product? Again, if we Call carbon bearing chlorine, carbon bearing living group as alpha. This adjacent carbon is beta, which is different than this beta carbon. The top one is secondary carbon. However, this beta in the bottom is tertiary carbon. Can we have beta elimination here? Yes. OH minus could remove this blue hydrogen, and then these two electrons come here, and chloride leaves to form this product which I call B. Is this a favor, favorable E2 reaction? Yes, because the blue hydrogen, which is beta hydrogen, and the living group are in opposite sides. They are in anti-positions. So this E2 reaction also uh, is good for formation of product. Now, the question is that between A and B products, which one is major? If you look at the product A, this is an alkene which is di-substituted. That means we have two substitution here for this alkene. However, for product B, this alkene is try substituted one here one carbon 
is carbon of methyl and one carbon is here. And which one is more stable based on a rule which is called uh, Seth's rule. Here, the product, the alkene in which we have more substituents bonded to the double bond is the major product. Here, B is tri substituted product. However, A is a di substituted product. And based on Seidzev's rule, which one is the major product? B would be the major product. And by the way, this reaction is called also regioselective regio reaction because the position of double bond is determined by the stability of the molecule. Again, the more substituted the alkene, the more stable the alkene. Thank you very much for your attention.